welcome back to my channel and today we are reviewing 1917. So 1917 was directed by Sam Mendes and it stars Dean Charles Chapman and George McKay. Two soldiers in World War I are sent over enemy lines to deliver a message which calls for a ceasefire. If they don't succeed, it will result in the death of 1,600 soldiers. Now Hollywood is not a stranger to war films. I mean, they're all over the place and as you can tell if you look behind me, I really do enjoy myself some good war films. It's really its own subgenre. I mean, war. I mean, it, it really is. War movies are like war movies. You know, like that is a genre on its own. And another type of movie that exists in Hollywood is the one take film. Now, obviously, no film has ever actually had the camera just record for a straight two hours. I mean, that can't happen. If someone messed up at the end, they would have to reshoot the entire movie. So they don't do that. So any movie that's like that, it's made to look like one take, which again is still extremely impressive because a lot of movies like that still have takes that can go up to 25 to 30 minutes. The most recent one take movie I believe is Birdman from 2014 which got a lot of praise from critics and audiences alike, got a lot of recognition at the Oscars. As for 1917, this was my first one take film that I would be watching. The trailers looked incredible. This poster right here is just amazing. Like I love that poster. It's my favorite teaser poster of the year aside from Joker. You have Sam Mendes directing it. You have Roger Deakins as the cinematographer. We'll talk about him later. So my expectations for this movie were fairly high and to be honest with you, I left the theater awestruck. Roger Deakins, that man is the god of cinematography. There is not a single cinematographer working today that is better than Roger Deakins. This film looks beautiful. The cinematography, as I said, is gorgeous. There are so many scenes where they could give this one take thing off as a gimmick, like they just follow behind the people the whole time, but no. There's a scene in this movie where these two soldiers have to walk around a pond, and instead of the camera just following behind them and being sort of lazy and gimmicky, it actually breaks off from them, lowers to the surface of the pond water, like literally just above the surface, and slowly pans sideways with them in a tracking shot all the way to the other side of the pond. That type of filmmaking, it's just, it's not something you see hardly anymore in Hollywood nowadays. This film is seamless for the most part. I mean, while there are times where you can tell, yeah, there is probably a cut there. For example, maybe there's a whip pan or the screen goes black just for a second. This is still a massive filmmaking achievement. It is a nightmare for me to imagine how difficult it was to shoot this film. And because of the one-shot aspect of the film, it also brings an extreme sense of urgency. Rarely do you ever feel that these soldiers are safe. There are so many scenes where you honestly feel like they could be sniped, stabbed, tackled, just killed at any moment, which is a pitch perfect representation of what World War One and Two were like. And the production design is just incredible. I don't know who the production designer was, but my history teacher, she is basically obsessed with the World Wars, particularly World War Two, but she is so knowledgeable on the attire that they wore back then, the, the soldiers, the conditions of the trenches, and just trench warfare in general. She watched the trailer for this, and she just got so excited. She was like, this is gonna be so, so awesome. Unfortunately, it is the next semester, so I don't actually know what she thought of the film, but this video is about what I thought of the film. You guys don't care about my history teacher. What I'm saying is, the production design is perfect. I have no problems with it. This this consistently felt like it was in 1917. As I mentioned before, this film is not lazy with the one-shot gimmick. Like I said, it doesn't always just follow behind people when it has opportunities to do cool things. When it has those opportunities to do cool things, it does those cool things. Like seriously, the camera does some incredible things in this movie, like super cool things that are just so incredible to look at. Go in knowing it, you're gonna see the camera do some extremely incredible things. Now, as I said, the film has a great sense of urgency. With that also comes a great sense of immersion, which is mostly due to the one shot take, but I don't want to keep on dwelling on that. The two lead performances in this movie are fantastic. I genuinely felt myself caring about these characters. This entire film, I was laser focused on the screen. I barely ate any of my popcorn and I barely drank any of my Sprite. The entire time I was just like, we're doing this, I am in this, I am not getting out, it has hooked me, keeping my eyes on that screen until the very end, and I did. This movie's two hours long, 
I didn't take a bathroom break. In fact, after the movie was over, I had to go to the bathroom because I didn't realize while I was watching it that I needed to use the bathroom. Like, that is how immersive this film is. I just realized, uh, that analogy was, uh, Hmm. Now, in an era of Hollywood where CG is just, like, everywhere, like, hardly anything is practical anymore, it was extremely refreshing to see that most of the action in this movie is 100% practical. The explosions on the battlefield, the artillery shells, it all sounds, looks, and feels feels real. It was just so enthralling, like it was so white knuckled, my, my hands were literally on the edge of my seat, I was literally going, oh god please just don't die. Now similar to Dunkirk, this film is lacking particularly in the character department. Dunkirk decided to be a thriller. It wasn't trying to be an, an incredible character study, it was just about that event and how truly horrific it was. And that film was incredible, similar to this film. But this film does have a lot more characterization than Dunkirk did. So in the end, I did find myself rooting for our characters. I wanted them to make it out. One of the characters has a brother that will die if they don't get the message to their fellow troops in time. Which again, added to the urgency of this film. These guys barely had a second to rest. Heck, no, they didn't have any time to rest. There is no resting in this movie. Running, explosions, gunfights, just suspense like no second of this movie has much of a tension release until the credits roll. Now after decades of Roger Deakins being snubbed at the Oscars for best cinematography, he finally won his Oscar for Blade Runner 2049 which I still have yet to see. Th th this is my pick for best cinematography of the year. I get why they might not give him the Oscar because he just won one for Blade Runner 2049 but he, he needs it. I haven't seen another film this year with better cinematography. Guys, in the end, 1917 was a white-knuckled technical achievement that will grip you from the first frame to the last. And I'm going to give this film a 9.8 out of 10, which brings us to an A plus on the grading scale. Also a little update here, it used to be that I only gave the Zackham Award to films that had a 10 out of 10 and A+, plus, but I've just changed that to an A+. Plus. If I give a film an A+, plus, I do consider it a, a cinematic masterpiece, which means this film is getting the Zackham Award, the Zay Beast Award of Cinematic Mastery. So just to clarify, any film that I've reviewed on this channel before this video that has a 9.5 out of 10 or higher did receive the Zay Beast Award of Cinematic Mastery. Mastery. So 1917, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below. I'd love to hear what you think. And if you haven't seen it, what is your favorite war film of all time? This is mine right here, Hacksaw Ridge. That's my favorite war film of all time. And before you go crazy, I have not seen Saving Private Ryan that. I'm going to be watching that with my dad within the next couple days, hopefully. Thanks so much for watching, guys. It really does mean a lot. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, keep writing, keep shooting, and keep editing.